Welcome back to RTC, ladies and gentlemen. Joe's Craig, and today I know it's been a while. I'm not gone. I'm just actually, <laughs> you know, trying to fix up my internet problem, which is still plaguing me, which I'm hoping to have finished next week. But I am going to try to get out a few videos this week, even with bad internet, because I've missed you guys, and I just want to talk about this awesome game that I've been playing in my break time from work and whatnot and not being able to record but I found out it's actually a really great game I always wanted to play this game it has been on the PC for a while it's called Mountain Blades Warband and it's absolutely fantastic it's right up my alley as the whole idea of becoming a mercenary commander or a lord's army commander or whatever really you don't really have to go the way I'm doing it I'm going militaristic because well I am the commander of course but you can actually go different ways. You can become a newly found shop assistant who will help out local merchants and towns and deliver packages to them. Or you become a, a traveling merchant on your own. And well, that does have some benefits of making a lot of money in this game, but you also are practically on your own for a while. So that means you do have to upgrade it to a point where you actually have enough men guarding you and your supplies they continue on doing trades and whatnot. It does include a quite intricate system of where you find out who's like what city needs what or what's well seen. Like you know, whole buy and buy and sell, and you know the whole supply and demand. Because one city could have a lot of the other uh, items you want. Let's say we had a uh, one city that sold uh, quantities of ale, but there's one other city that can't get at them because they're currently at war with different nations. But you, being a neutral party at that point, can go all over the lands, defend yourselves from bandits or deserters if you can if you can raise up a more affordable army yes by the way when you have an army you have to pay them each month <laughs> which is crazy and depending on how level high level of a troop you have if they're really upgraded to be excellent infantry as you can see here all that blue there is all my soldiers just killing everyone and they're not that expensive i only have quite a few sergeants in the army and then a lot of infantry which I've, got, I've done a good status quo of equalness, but I also will be lacking in certain areas. This is a medieval tactical game where archers and cavalrymen can make the difference in the game into a battle, which is, you know, really, really important for any commander on the field. But you see here, I have some great infantry that are fighting infantry battles, but I can also hire mercenaries, like just random freelance mercenaries into my army temporarily if I want to keep them. I tend to use them as the conscript force that I usually put as a custom tab where I have the cavalry following me there. That's a particular unit known as a manhunter. And then they can upgrade to slave hunters and whatnot and then mercenary cavalrymen. And that's their highest rank. You see there, they're not particularly powerful. They were taken down by two bandits and them. There you go, dead. But if you level them up, they'll become more powerful, have better equipment than gear, and will be a fighting force to be reckoned with. But fighting your way or trading and whatnot or just becoming a freelance mercenary like I have become, which I don't you like, you know, like it's usually the fun part there is always a good way to go. But you can actually become more political in this game. You can actually have a political standing in the realm, depending on which faction you side with at first. You can, you can actually become a lord of the land yourself. But everything you've done, anything bad or whatnot, can be reflected after that as well. And you have to make amends with other nations so they don't actually come after you and attack you during a war. Like, I've been in two campaigns at the moment and barely survived. And it's been one hell of a, like a, one hell of a battle, by the way. Because you're going to have other lords with massive armies attacking you. And also you can actually be like a rogue element while the other lords fight each other. You can loot villages, attack farmers... Uh, besiege castles when they're low on troops and whatnot. A lot of things factor into a long stage war. At one point, the country that I'm serving in right now as a mercenary was being attacked on three front fronts, but having only one ally. And let's go to the, some of the cultures that we have in, at the moment. We have the Nords, who are basically the Vikings of this game. I'm apologizing for the next two names that I actually can't remember how to pronounce, which are basically the Mongols or the Mongolians. And then we have the Middle Eastern countries, like uh, how you would see it in the Crusades. And also we have like kind of the European factions here. You see, I have more of a European army here which I'm playing as the Kingdom of Swada, I think it's called. So I'm t basically going with the idea that it might be the French military or the English. It's most likely English because they had the flat helmets there and more of their style. 
And of course my helmet and whatnot, it's very, very reminiscent of an English knight. And we also have the Kingdom of the Redux, who are kind of like re renowned for spearmen and crossbows. Uh, my army at the moment is renowned for infantry and cavalry, which I'm mainly going infantry at the moment to help build up funds and supplies and whatnot. Even like a, a rank 30 raider party is terrified of my troops because I have a lot of these veteran troops, which are known as sergeants. And they are powerful, trust me. You'll see in a second when all the blue pops up on the side. That's my infantry and my sergeants wiping out the enemy as they stand. And, you know, it's fantastic. And being like a neutral faction, you get to travel all over the map and not be bothered by anyone apart from just bandits and whatnot. And sea raiders or deserters or of different nations trying to pillage and make a name for themselves and earn money when the lords are fighting the battles and not defending their lands. Which I've never really taken too much on. I have another character where I'm just being a raider on it. A mercenary raider who signs up with a campaign army, like signs up, signs up with a country's army for a month and attacks the enemy. And I usually pillage and raid their caravans, which I end up taking a lot of their supplies and their resources but also to add in the fact that if you wanted to become a member of a faction you have to earn renown but there's different starting uh, kind of um, positions where it give you enough renown to actually be recognized by the lords but you still have to earn their trust and whatnot a lot of stuff like how the f how the country or the rulers of the country feel towards you there is somewhat of a karma system if you do too many bad things in one country the lords won't like you you do a lot of good things that benefits them in a way you actually get a lot of them as well but having a political system like that as well there's a very vast political system that you can go through like you can actually do courtship uh you can actually build your own your own nation actually at one point and that is actually really difficult i've looked that up online i've talked to people about it and they said that's probably the most difficult thing they've done but it's usually always good to build your own nation during a war and during peacetime build up your armies to defend your castle and then take over other castles and make allyships with different nations and whatnot or even invite them to join yours so my overview of this game is that it is fantastic i have never had so much fun commanding my own army and at the moment i'm just doing a mercenary build which i'm earning enough the money to actually keep my infantry alive and well and fed a lot of things come into play like that you have to feed your army pay them each month uh upgrade them so they'll have better equipment and they'll survive in the battlefield longer and be able to wipe out enemies as they stand like i'm fighting forest bandits who are renowned for their whole archery skills which if i had a normal army of militia would have been wiped out in seconds but i have a very outstanding army of sergeants and infantry and and footmen who are fantastic in the field against archers because they have big shields and they're able to get through everything but yeah this is pretty much the overview of the game it's on the psn store right now i believe it's on xbox one as well you guys should really give it a try it does have an online mode where you play like 62 players and whatnot in different maps and situations and sieges it's absolutely fantastic and i plan to play a lot of it more on the channel because it's an rts and i love rts's anyways i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you next time on rtc